Upon my first reading of Busarankin Volume 5 years ago, I liked the idea of having the skull attacked and having it be attacked by a mad scientist with a bunch of grotesque looking monsters and the two main characters showing up, you know, in a superheroesque fashion to basically save the day. And I was annoyed by everything else because I just wanted it to be focused on Kazuki kicking ass and also on Tokiko as well kicking ass. And I wanted more screen time with Captain Bravo versus Moonface. So I thought that was really important too. Upon rereading this volume, I figured, or rather, I became more invested in the side characters and their how they uh, perceived the events going on. The fact that Kazuki's friends figured out that the person fighting for them with the lance is Kazuki Muto because it goes back to the last volume or I mean the, the last volume that I, you know reviewed where they mentioned that they can tell who he is without having to see his dumbass face <laughs> they know their friend that well and I've been saying this time and time again that one of Nobuhiro Atsuki's strongest points as a writer is character interaction and I see another strong point he has as a writer is that he knows when to take a secondary character and give them more to do. To give them more limelight. And there's an entire chat dedicated just to these secondary characters. You know, dedicated to Kazuki's friends, dedicated to Mahiro, Kazuki's you know, sister. That chapter is probably the best chapter in the entire volume in terms of story because I feel like unlike other uh, background friends you know friends that you're kind of introduced to at first in the story but then they just fade away into the background and maybe they'll become relevant here and there more or less to remind the MC, you know, his origin. But here's the thing, though. Nobuhiro Matsuki had really never put uh, Kazuki's friends in danger. Up until now. And even now, with these guys being in danger, they still... We're not playing, uh, being, uh, Gary Sue's or Mary Sue's. Or, sorry, Gary Stew's or Mary Sue's. You know, they weren't the damsels in distress. Instead, they went into action. They took out one of the, uh, familiars of the LXE without knowing what a familiar was. And I love how none of them really react to seeing Angel goes in. <laughs> They're just like, oh, it's a creature. You know, like their, their, their reaction to this whole situation is not what you expect it to be from normal students. Now, I feel like all the other students, the actual background characters, are acting how people probably would, would react if they saw these big ass uh, grotesque looking fucking monsters. Nope, not Kazuki's friends. They're not acting like that at all. And that is because of how well Nobuhiro Atsuki has shaped these four individuals. And granted, you know, they're basically there to make Kazuki look better. That's their job. Is to amplify Kazuki's key character component and that is the fact that he fights for other people that's what they're there for and yes he was protect his friends but I'm saying that like 
we're not going to get a we're not going to get an event where one of them is about to be killed by some kind of homunculus or humoid homunculus or third type or what have you okay now another character that got some great character development Kochaku Chono aka Papillon and Papillon proved that he is better than his forefather Butterfly wait Dr. Butterfly yes <laughs> That fight was pretty damn good. Even though Papillon is one crazy son of a bitch who basically blew himself up in order to ensure victory against his own great great grandfather. <laughs> and we finally get to see who the traitor is. It's a being named Victor. Now, Victor utilizes a black Kakugane, and Victor can absorb the energy around him for him is like breathing and there's nothing he can do about it what's crazy is that the foreshadowing that Nobuhiro Watsuki was doing throughout this entire volume showing that Kazuki will become just like Victor by basically having Kazuki do feats and do just incredible stuff to where it just doesn't make plausible sense. To where, like, now Kazuki can effortlessly destroy gigantic monstrosities. And he has so much power, it's like he's, you know, using the power of others to keep on fighting forward. But, that's the kind of character Kazuki Muto is, you know? He fights for other people. But now it's like he's fighting for other people by basically taking their energies from them and utilizing their energies to fight for them. Kind of a weird concept, you think about it. You know? There's one thing about one of the author comments at the end of the volume I found very interesting. And that was that. Nobuhiro, Nobuhiro Watsuki writes that instead of fighting for others, Kazuki will not have to fight for himself. Which is quite strange, because, you know, from the very beginning of this manga, we've seen Kazuki do nothing but fight for the safety of others. Fight for the sake of others. Not once had he ever tried to fight for, for himself. Has, it has always been for the benefit of somebody else. But now, the fact that he's going to have to fight for himself? Whoa. I'm not going to say that one is just, whoa. That is just, that's crazy. <laughs> and I'm kind of excited to see what's going to happen because... At the very end there, Kazuki became, like, Victor. Now, in terms of writing, Victor would be considered as an enigma. Because there's a lot of mystery surrounding him. Yet, there's still nothing that we really know about him. What we can, abs what we can ascertain from this volume is that Victor is incredibly strong and Victor has a very bleak look or sorry bleak outlook at alchemy as a whole believing that anybody that practices alchemy whether they're an alchemist warrior a homunculi probably people that create homunculi basically anything to do with alchemy should be eradicated from the planet. And I'm wondering just how will he go about doing this? The craziness that is Captain Bravo versus Moonface. The fact that Moonface is basically utilizing Kage Butsu no Jutsu through a Renkin, and, sorry, through a Buso Renkin that looks like a crescent moon. And the fact that its ability 
is basically giving him 30 bodies going through the whole entire moon cycle it's with 30 different faces okay facing off against a man that's wearing a really old school uh english navy suit that he, it's, it's like armor for this guy and their battle is just wild in my opinion and also it was a good breather from the events happening over at ginsei academy because you know there's all that epicness happening at ginsei academy and then we got you know this battle happening back at the LXC headquarters then goes back to Kinsei Academy so I like the fact that Watsuki gave us that little breather there all right with that being said what did you guys think of Buso Renkin volume 5 let me know in the comments down below thank you guys for watching hope you guys have a wonderful day if you would be so kind please give Please give this video a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification icon that way you will know when another video comes out. Since this is volume 5, that means there will be 5 more videos left before we say bye bye to Buso Renkin. When that happens, yes, I do have another series that is going to come on through and replace this one. And that series will be announced at the end of my review of on Volume 10. So with, without further ado, y'all stay blessed.